Well, after last week's failed and embarrassing first attempt, House Republicans just now, by the margin of a single vote, have successfully impeached Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, a move which accomplishes exactly nothing because in order to convict and remove him from office, you need two-thirds of the Senate to vote in favor of it, and that absolutely will not happen. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert buttons before you go. I greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, so first things first, I know I look and sound rough, but I've been sick for the past five days. I hope you'll be very patient with me. Number two, isn't it sad and pathetic that this right here, impeaching a guy for absolutely no discernible reason and knowing full well that it won't make it anywhere in the Senate, that that's what counts as success for the House of Representatives, for MAGA Republicans, led by MAGA Republicans, the least productive iteration of Congress since the Great Depression, the second least productive iteration of Congress in U.S. history because they won't work bipartisanly with House Democrats, Senate Democrats, Senate Republicans, and a Democratic president. This is it. Well, believe it or not, they're really happy about this. They think this is something that you can hear in the hoots and the hollers and the back clapping. I want to play a couple of clips just to show you how happy Republicans are to have accomplished exactly nothing. On this vote, the yeas are 214 and the nays are 213. The resolution is adopted. Yeah, man. Can't wait for this to die an ugly death in the Senate. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And yet, Mike Johnson in this clip right here. They clap him on the back and fist bump it. Oh, man, magic. Magic MAGA Mike, man, that's what you are, baby. Look what you did. By one vote. And only because there were people missing, right? Because uh, there were a couple of Senate Democrats that weren't able to make it in due to weather. And you barely made it. You squeaked by by one. This is Lauren Boebert. Just now, we impeached Secretary Mayorkas, who's endangered our country by deliberately handing over control of our southern border to the cartel. Now that's delivering for the American people, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Would you deliver? You delivered nothing. He's not going anywhere to say nothing of the fact that you have wildly mischaracterized his posture at the border. She's smiling. Aha, but this is also why she's not doing very well with polling. It's not, and by the way, she's very likely, she just moved um, Lauren Bober. She just relocated to a different district in her home state, and she's very likely to not win it. So this might be the last we see of Lauren Boebert because she's probably going to lose the 2024 November election. Uh, it's not just her, Marjorie Taylor Greene, proud of our American, of our Republican conference for working together to stand with the American people to hold Secretary Mayorkas accountable for this blatant violation of our border laws. Tonight we voted to impeach Mayorkas. Again, they're so happy. But as Jared Moskowitz points out, the only thing this accomplished is the editing of his Wikipedia page referring to Mayorkas, because again, he's not going anywhere. Um, as a matter of fact, though, because this was done on a partisan basis, I want to remind you of what the current Republican Speaker of the House had to say about party line impeachment votes. This is what he had to say. The, the founding fathers, the founders of this country warned against single party impeachments, and they had a very specific reason for warning us against that. They said that it would be bitterly divisive, perhaps irreparably divisive for the country. Then why would you do that? Why would you have a partisan, a single party impeachment? Oh, wait, that was when it was about the impeachment of Donald Trump. Then, well, then, it, you know, single party impeachments, those are unacceptable. But when you go to impeach a Democrat, that's different. This is Tom McClintock, a Republican congressman who voted against impeaching Mayorkas both times. Newsmax is not happy about it. All right, we'll leave it right there. Congressman Tom McClintock, uh, this will for a vote again. Are you sticking by your guns on this or could you be swayed? Well, well, the Constitution has not changed since last week, so neither will my vote. There it is. There it is. I mean, you can tell he's, he's furious. But McClintock's position is it's unconstitutional to impeach uh, Representative, excuse me, Secretary Mayorkas for what is largely a policy dispute. They don't believe that he has adequately enforced border policies. Now, let's just take that at face value question is, is that an impeachable offense? Well, it should say something that not only certain Republican Congress people agree that it's not an impeachable offense. Conservative lawyers like Alan Dershowitz, who defended Donald Trump uh, during at least one of his impeachments, defended Trump. This is what he had to say about impeaching Mayorkas. Short of that, 
Well, but Alan, what about this dereliction of duty at the at the open border? I mean, what do you think should be done there? You're yeah. saying drop the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas? Yes, without a doubt, because uh, dereliction of duty was raised in the Constitutional Convention. They called it maladministration. And James Madison said, no, we can't have that as a ground for impeachment. You can have hearings. You can abolish the office. You can do a great many things. The one thing you can't do is abuse the impeachment power. So according to Dershowitz, who defended Trump, it's an abuse of the impeachment power to try to impeach Mayorkas for this. And again, he's not alone. Jonathan Turley, the guy who uh, that guy who Republicans will bring in for just about anything. He's like their go to their one constitutional expert. This is what he had to say. Mayorkas, while the, the House does have a tiny little majority of Republicans, the Senate's not going to pass it. They're not going to get two thirds majority. No, they're not. And but the thing is, look, I, I don't fault the House. If they have a basis for impeachment, regardless what the other House does, they have an obligation to proceed. I just don't believe that they have a cognizable basis here for impeachment. The they don't have a cognizable basis for impeachment. I mean, again, to get somebody like Jonathan Turley, who bends over backwards to try to justify anything Republicans want to do for him to so blatantly say that. I mean, it's a pretty weak case. If that's the case. Uh, here's a Republican strategist weighing in prior to the vote about what the vote might mean and what symbolize and what might it symbolize and convey to the American people. And in addition to this, Susan, House Republicans are going to try again to impeach DHS Secretary yeah. Alejandro Mayorkas. This time they actually think they have the votes because Steve Scalise is back. If it passes, of course, it's dead on arrival in the Senate. And of course, if it fails, it's an even bigger embarrassment, arguably, for the House. So what are they doing here? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, right now, it looks like they could have the votes. But we know from from what happened last week is that this, this majority, the speaker does not know how to count. And that's why the, it went down. But I actually think bringing down Mayorkas will show just how ridiculous the House is acting. They're trying to impeach someone who's trying to improve our border security. We could disagree by the means, but there was a bipartisan deal on the table. And Republican members of the House, some of them said, no, we don't think that this is you know, worth our time. So now they're trying to impeach Mayorkas, which is just ridiculous. It is ridiculous because, again, while they were trying to impeach him, he was working with them on a bipartisan but largely conservative border bill, which effectively gave Republicans the vast majority of the things they demanded. Republicans even then, and certainly in the Senate, have said, guys, this is the best deal we're ever going to get because Democrats won't vote for such a conservative deal if a Republican's in office. And by the way, nor should they, uh, because, again, this is, a, this is a very conservative bill. But because Donald Trump wanted to run on the issue, Republicans couldn't accept it. They couldn't take yes for an answer. And so, again, they, you know, settled for this uh, pointless virtue signaling of politics. Because, again, Alejandro Mayorkas will indeed remain the secretary of Homeland Security unless he resigns or unless President Biden fires him uh, until Biden leaves office. So it's, this isn't going to work. Speaking of President Biden, uh, Ian Sams, one of the president's spokespeople, issued this statement. Um, this is from President Biden. History will not look kindly on House Republicans for their blatant act of unconstitutional partisanship as targeted an honorable public servant in order to play petty political games. Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas, a Cuban immigrant who came to the United States with his family as a political refugee, has spent more than two decades serving America with integrity as a decorated career in, in a decorated career in law enforcement and public service. From his time in the Justice Department as a U.S. attorney to his service as a deputy secretary and now secretary of Homeland Security, he's upheld the rule of law faithfully and has demonstrated a deep commitment to the values that make our nation great. The impeachment was already failed once on a bipartisan vote. Instead of staging political stunts like this, Republicans with genuine concerns about the border should want Congress to deliver more border resources and stronger border security. Sadly, the same Republicans pushing the baseless impeachment are rejecting bipartisan plans Secretary Mayorkas and others in my administration have worked hard on to strengthen border security at this very moment, reversing from years of their own demands to pass stronger border bills. Giving up on real solutions right when they are needed most in order to play politics is not what the American people expect from their leaders. Congress needs to act to give me, Secretary Mayorkas, and my administration the tools and resources needed 
to address the situation at the border. The House also needs to pass the Senate's national security supplemental right away. We will continue pursuing real solutions to the challenges of House, or excuse me, Americans face, and House Republicans have to decide whether to join us in solving the problem or keep playing games at the border. Yeah, simply put, uh, again, Mayorkas isn't going anywhere at all. This is a stunt, but it's so pathetic that this is how happy Republicans are to have basically stepped over to turn down actual substantive progress, actual substantive at least legislation, right? Um, and many of which, you know, has their priorities, the, the legislation in question. They would rather spend political capital in an election year on a stunt which absolutely will not work. And now it's up to you and I and Democrats and the president to make them pay for it politically. Let me know what you think in the comments.